Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're doing an overview of the entire second season and talking about what worked, what didn't, and what could have been done differently. First and foremost, if you haven't watched any of these episodes before, there are 52 videos before this one, each going into minute detail about how each individual episode making up this season went. We begin this season boldly in prime time. Rita Repulsa, the evil space witch, is out of a job thanks to Lord Zed, her boss, who has come back to finish the job. He has forced her back into her space dumpster and sends her out into space, and he becomes the immediate new villain for us. His next plan of action is to gain control of the Zords, which he does, but once the Rangers get their Zords back, they utilize the power of Thunder to form brand new Zords. Jason has the Red Dragon Thunder Zord. Zack has the Lion Thunder Zord. Billy has the Unicorn Thunder Zord. Trini has the Griffin Thunder Zord. And Kim has the Firebird Thunder Zord. They come together to form the brand new Thunder Megazord. Also, Zed doesn't like the old putties. No, no. It's time for Z putties which are the same old ones without black stripes that now have a giant self-destruct button on their chest in the shape of a Z. The next big part of the season starts in Green No More, where a monster called Turban Shell comes down and he is the reason that Tommy, whose powers have been failing consistently for a while, is now completely stripped of his powers. In fact, we even follow this up with an episode about Jason, who blames himself for losing the powers for Tommy in the first place in the Green Candle in Season 1. No one is taking it well. After another few filler episodes, the next big part occurs with White Light, a two-parter in which Alpha and Zordon have created a brand new White Ranger to get the Rangers back up to six members. It is revealed to be Tommy, who now has the White Tiger Zord at his command, as well as a sword that allegedly talks a lot more than it actually does, named Saba. He is instantly made the new leader of the Power Rangers by Zordon. Harsh. In the middle of all of this White Ranger business, Rita's space dumpster appears back on Earth and Bulk and Skull actually free her. However, she's stopped just in the nick of time by the Rangers who shove her back into the dumpster and send her back into space. After three episodes of them casually mentioning how there's a peace conference coming up that's going to select teens from Angel Grove for it, Kim, Billy, and Tommy make friends with three new color-coded friends, Rocky, Adam, and Aisha. There are a few interesting episodes here where Rocky, Adam, and Aisha are silent members of the Power Rangers team, while Jason, Zack, and Trini are literal silent members of the Power Rangers team. <laughs> They're basically nowhere to be found except for in Sue. Before long, we're introduced to Tor, the Carrier Zord, who is a giant turtle. There's really not much else to say there. Finally, in the power transfer, three teens have been selected for the Peace Conference. Jason, Zack, and Trini. Upon hearing this, the six rangers must travel to the deserted planet to retrieve the Sword of Light, which will allow them to transfer the red, black, and yellow powers to three new candidates. Zed also goes to the deserted planet with his new Zord, called Serpentera, who is so powerful that he can demolish entire planets, but at the same time constantly runs out of power. The rangers get the Sword of Light, come back, and they transfer the powers to Rocky, Adam, and Aisha. Rocky has become the Red Ranger which isn't as glorious as it was before since he's not the leader. Adam is the Black Ranger, and Aisha is the Yellow Ranger. After a ton more cringy, horrible written filler episodes in which the only real thing that happens is that they introduce the power cannon into their arsenal, the wedding occurs, and Rita is back once again, but this time she gets free on the moon. She finds Finster, who makes her regular size again, and she demands that he uses a love potion on Lord Zed to make him love her and marry her. Finster does, and there's a wedding between the two villains, showing that sometimes true love is everywhere. We finish out the season with a lot of multi-parters, which see the Rangers going back in time with Tommy, who fights an evil clone Green Ranger version of himself, Kim, Tommy, and Rocky getting stuck in a storybook, and Kim gets sent back in time again solo to get power coins to their ancestors taking on Goldar and a monster in the year 1880. It's a weird ride. This season ends on a filler about there being two Billies, and just like last time, it's not much to write home about. So what worked here? Honestly, toward the end, a lot worked. However, there were clearly a lot of things going on during the season that harmed it. The three rangers that were replaced was not planned, as they were fired for asking for more money. So introducing Rocky, Adam, and Aisha slowly before giving them powers was awkward when half of your cast was just not on set. Also, every single multi-parter struggled to even come to an end. It was kind of painful. This is because there were actually other episodes written that had to be scrapped because production of the Power Rangers movie 
had gone so severely over time. The only new ranger that works is Adam because, well, he's the only one with a personality. He's the shy, romantic kid at school, which is a cool juxtaposition to Zack. Rocky might as well be a piece of cardboard, and Aisha is a copy and paste version of Kimberly. Seriously. She wants to get into the fashion industry and she loves shopping. Couldn't be less of a character if she tried. We already have you on this show. So what could they have done? Honestly, just giving the new rangers anything to do besides just be there would have helped. Have Aisha be from the wrong side of the tracks or like a tomboy would have been kind of a different new dynamic for the team while well, maybe making Rocky a goofball or a class clown. Actually, I don't even care. Anything would have helped. Just something. A lot of the major issues of this season had to do with the spliced Japanese footage which they couldn't really do anything about, so I'll give them a bit of a pass on that. But other than that, I think season two was kind of doomed from the start. So, looking forward, how will season three fare? Honestly, it's one of my absolute favorites, simply because you can tell that the writers are starting to figure out what the hell they even want to do. And they don't have to write around something as big as three people just being gone. So, I'll tease this. New villains in relation to old ones a new ranger, and an actual season finale. Get stoked. But until then, may the power protect you.